Hello, episode zero of The Late Show. We're here to talk about some Dragon Con goodness. Absolutely. Uh, yep. In the middle of August, which feels like now the middle of October. Yeah, you'll notice we're a little more bundled up than we normally would be in Atlanta in summer because it's it turned into outside. autumn. It was really weird. But it might be summer by the time we get around to the show, so let's talk about that show. But first, my name is Brian Richardson, and welcome back to your Dragon Con preview episode of The Dragon Con Late Show. With me, as always, is the doctor, Stephen Grenade. Hello. And Allie Belfry. Hi. That's Allie. Yes. Yes. So anyway, I'd say she's the one with hair, but both of y'all have hair, and I had to balance I think out Brian's by having none. is almost longer than mine. It's now. true. I'm working on it. I got to get some volume up in this thing. You can do so the I'm sensitive ponytail man ponytail. No. Come Caution on, here, no, I'm not with your Birkenstocks. No, no Birkenstocks. You can do it. I don't like getting my shoes recorked every six months. All right. Anyway, point being, we're going to talk about some Dragon Con business. So and first Birkenstocks. Of all, um, Dragon Con, don't forget Labor Day weekend 2013, uh, in the Hyatt, Marriott, Hilton, Sheridan, and Weston hotels, and now... The Apparel Mart. The Apparel Mart, thank yes. you, for the dealer's room, which calling it a dealer's room is sort of a misnomer. It's sort of like a Costco of dealer's room it's at this sort of point. Like it's the dealer's warehouse. It's sort of like just referring to the Marriott as a hotel. Yes. No, not even close. So anyway, um, now that we've got all the locations in play, let's talk about a little bit of the logistics first of all. Uh, if you have pre-registered, get your badge on Thursday, if at all possible. If you have not pre-registered, <laughs> oh boy. Although, uh, uh, yeah. look on the website. There is a new form that you can fill out if you are buying your badge in when you get here. It comes with a QR code. It will make registration yes. faster. You want to make registration faster. Yes. If you have not been here, make registration go faster. Registration is it's going a lot. Place. It's going really fast these days. It can always go faster. It can always be faster. Get the portal gun, right? Get the portal gun. Yes. Shoot everybody out of your way. Yes. Speaking of getting things, have you guys downloaded the app yet? I have not. I haven't either. Okay. The Dragon We're bad. App, yeah. The Dragon Cut app, <laughs> you'll have to take it from me because you haven't tried it yet, is available in the Google Play Store and or Market or whatever they call that thing and the uh, iTunes Market. Sorry, Windows Phone. But there is a web um, site that you can get some info from as well. Uh, that's a very good app. I will tell you right now, if you download the schedule any time before the Wednesday before <laughs> con, the schedule may not be up to date. Get used to taking application updates and get used to a little bit of a delay when the application starts because it always checks for the latest database. Which you want. Yes, yes. which you want. Uh, but also, uh, this is something they did last year in the app and it's back for this year is the friend the whole code. The friending yes. thing. Yes. Are you, Ali, are you familiar with the friend code? What is the friend code? Okay. Sounds, that sounds like a we don't okay talk about kind of the thing. Code. All right, so friend, if like you go into your app, yeah. you can generate so. codes that you can give to your friends. It's one use only code, so mm -hmm. hopefully you only have one or two friends. Or you're going to have to generate a lot. But once you have done <laughs> that, then you can see each other's schedule and see which lines everybody is standing in to wait to see whomever. Yeah. Whichever supernatural actor is there. Is, is supernatural is still a thing? You're on Tumblr, tell me. Is supernatural <laughs> still a thing? I don't think so. They're more into Sherlock on the Tumblr these days. Oh, Sherlock and Pacific Rim. All, All the Sherlocks? All the Sherlocks. And Pacific Rim. There Together. There are so many of the Sherlocks. Uh, also, uh, with all of your advanced planning, uh, you will at some point see a PDF, or a PDF, as they like to call it in the trades, version of the schedule. But you can also get the schedule in this kind of dead tree format. I think the steampunk people call it paper. Parchment. Uh, once you arrive at the registration. It's a pound works. set. They scrape them off the, what was on the last year, and then they put the new one on exactly. them. Exactly. Allie, where is registration this year? Registration is in the Sheraton. Very good. Yes, I know things. You passed the quiz. You know you things. Be on the show. Downstairs in the Sheraton, in the big Sheraton registration room. Yeah. Follow the tape lines on yes, the floor. Yes, they do a great job. Yes. They'll have a sign up front that says, if you are here for registration of this kind, then it'll follow the red tape or follow the blue tape or the, the green. Short it's all color code. Glad. Yes. Mauve, so ultraviolet, sailing for the vampires. Follow the yellow tape road is essentially road. what we're telling you. Don't sing. Okay, Please. I wasn't singing. No. I was vocalized. <laughs> That's no, Brian, no. We agree. You were not singing. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All we do is agreement. So the other thing about uh, early arrival, if you require disability services, this is not just, oh, I'm in a wheelchair. There are various types of recognized disabilities at Dragon Con. Uh, go check the website for disability information. If you qualify for one of those, including if you have a service animal, it's very important, mm -hmm. or you have, uh, I'm trying to remember the correct medical term, but a kind of like a, a personal handler that has to be with you at all times for administering medication or you know, other types of medical needs, they may want to register as well. Uh, it does determine what types of events and lines and things they can get into. So check out the disability information on the website if it's required. Uh, our editor, Tommy, will put links somewhere interesting like over here where you can go to the website and check that out. Yes, disability uh, services is also in the bottom floor of the Sheridan by registration. So if you mm -hmm. need or have questions while you are on site, head to the Sheraton. 
Right. And there are interesting seating rules for disability services. If you are not a disabled attendee of Dragon Con, uh, do not sit in the disabled marked seats. Security frowns upon such things. Yes. yes. Uh, it's not very polite at all. Plus, anybody in a wheelchair could be a featured Dalek or cyborg or, you know, of some kind. So don't mess with them. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Okay. We're oh, there. Still not okay, getting yeah, it. Yeah, okay, good. You it's the, hairs, the hairs in the way is the I problem. Know. If you didn't I don't have, have hair, mutant powers you pick like up everything. You. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's true. It's, it, see, this is open to all kinds of right. solar radiation, so, you know, it's a thing. So, what are we excited about this year at Con? We'll start with Allie, who's just like teaming with Kaiju Excitement. Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yes, I'm going to talk about Pacific Rim again. Show I'm, off your shirt. Yeah, wait. She has her Pacific Rim shirt. A yes. little bit of excitement about the movie. A little bit. I'm excited. A bunch of uh, Pacific Rim fans are having a meetup on Saturday at the convention. Sweet. Excellent. Saturday afternoon. Um, then there's also going to be a cosplay contest. Ooh. So cool. So are we going to? Now here's what I'm looking forward to: is the cardboard box kaiju and cardboard box uh, Jaegers. I'm sure. Really excited it, to see It those. needs to happen. Yes. yes. It needs, it needs to totally be a thing. A lot of tinfoil. I didn't have time to do that, but if yeah. you do. More power Cardboard to you. Cardboard Jaegers, yes. Cardboard Jaegers. They, now, if they're made out of Jaegermeister boxes, also better. better. Yes. That's just the obvious way. That's what you put in the center of the chest plate. Yes. Some people are nuclear powered, other people, yep. Jaeger powered. Yeah. Stephen, what are you I'm excited about? I'm always powered. I am excited about a lot of the stuff that's going on on the space and science tracks, science. the maker robotics track. Mm -hmm. over there in the Hilton. Uh, yeah. I always enjoy getting to see some of those. There are a lot of good folks who are talking about science, science. and other things like that. Sorry. So Reflex. I'm, Reflex. I'm looking Can't forward to it. Yourself. Yeah. It's, it's a thing. It's, science is a thing. Science it's absolutely is a thing. Thing. Science is a thing. We all agree. Yes. You heard it here first. Science, a thing. You should get you some of that science. Uh, I am excited about uh, a large number of the Warehouse 13 people showing up. Oh, for, good. Um, their, their last... Uh, Look, their they last. went longer than Eureka. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Still angry. And in the same universe. <laughs> yes. So, hey, you know, they didn't have to go to a second universe to keep the show going. So I'm they sensing got some going. resentment, Stephen. And also, not at Warehouse 13, just at Eureka um, not being around. Also, More just since, sadness. Since I'm yeah. on the internet, I'm interested in George Takei coming back because I'd like to ask him about how to speed up my internet service at the house because apparently he runs the internet now. He does that? run the he internet. He took over from Al Gore yes. uh, after mm -hmm. he sold current TV. Is that how that works? It shows up, he shows up on all of my friends on Facebook and on the Tumblrs and He's the things like that. all the media that is social. He's all the media. Yes. So, he, is, is he actually doing, oh, well, God, George can't Snapchat. That just would be kind of wild. But it's good. <laughs> Uh, All of his interviews will be in the form of vines. Yes. Six seconds. I am George loop. Decay, and we're done. Sorry, go <laughs> George. Bye. Uh, I'm also super excited about what Crispy's working on this year, which is why we're in this space, is that we're going to be having select interviews from the Marriott. Look at the lovely Marriott. Now this will be filled with Imagine all of the people costumes. Imagine all people behind us that are dressed up for this thing. Look oh. like they did. You dressed up for this thing. Shirt. You heard your shirt has buttons and is buttoned and Multiple everything. Buttons. And uh, he's making us look bad. We look all slobby. That, it's yeah. the only time that's ever happened <laughs> in the history of God. So uh, those interviews are going to go out onto our YouTube channel uh, during the convention, as opposed to long after the convention. So make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's Video Dragon Con. We'll put, and by we, we mean Tommy, we'll put an annotation kind of like right here. Click, click on Stephen's head. That'll be awesome. Uh, also in the Dragon Con app, the official Dragon Con video section, that goes to the YouTube channel. Uh, and that will bring Look, you if the you hold the URL videos. like this, they can't see it. You have to hold the URL like that. Oh, is it? Is it like this and not like that? Yes. Are we allowed to... <laughs> but We're just making Tommy's life really Essentially, hard. Tommy is thinking, these are all the things I have to annotate and do uh, things with. Post-production. <laughs> you can fix nemesis. it in post, right, Tommy? <laughs> he is post-production. How exciting. <laughs> so uh, let's round up the hotels again. Remember that the... Um, the larger events you're going to find are going to be, um, depending on your fandom, and typically the main programming kind of stuff happens in the Hyatt, in the Centennial Ballroom or the Regency Ballroom. Uh, it's going to happen in the Marriott and the Atrium Ballroom. We're also added the Imperial Ballroom in the Marriott, which you may remember from past years as having some of the dealers or exhibitors in it. Right, it's mm -hmm. downstairs. Downstairs. Uh, you have the Sheridan Grand, which is your British and Trek programming. Garrett Wong just sort of lives out of that room during yep. the entire T of the convention. And then you also have the Weston Peachtree, which is a big ballroom. Um, the Weston Atlanta ballroom, I believe, has yeah. uh, medium-sized events in it. And the Hilton uh, is the Crystal Ballroom. Yes, yes, that sounds correct. That is new for this year. The Hilton has normally only been gaming and Walk of Fame, uh, but now Walk of Fame is in the Marriott, and the Crystal Ballroom is now uh, a programming area in the Hilton. So don't just go there for the wonders of podcasting and science. Uh, also go there for some of our larger programming events. We are growing. 
we're, we're kind of a big con. And sure, we can put more people in this space. That'd be good. Always, yes. And the dealer's room should have a little bit more space to spread out in the apparel mart, because uh, since it's set, it's a it's a place that does purchasing conventions. So you mean I can actually things. I can breathe when I walk through there? Yeah, on you Saturday. won't have that thing where you don't it's actually like shop. The you people. sort of get in the stream and slowly are carried past booths. Yeah, and whatever things stick to you on the way out, you just pay for as yeah. you leave. Yeah, so. I just kind of you know hold on to the nearest cosplayer. Boy, the right. Is, the dealer's room is so much good stuff in there, and I'm I'm glad that if they can spread out a little bit, you'll be able to actually see more of it. That way, you know, when I go to get my scoop of dice, I'm not going to elbow somebody in the face. <laughs> you still buying dice by the way? I, like, I like scoops of dice. Well, Shadowrun is so, back. Look, so sometimes you you're going to play vampire, and you got to have, yes, Shadowrun as well. <laughs> Here are all my D10s. <laughs> now I feel sad. <laughs> So really important thing to remember when you're at the convention this year, always have your badge and your hotel room key on you. Uh, as we did in previous years, there's going to be some periods of time where the hotel is locked down for security and traffic flow purposes. Now, lockdown doesn't mean you can't get in. What lockdown means is you need to be a paying guest in that particular hotel or have a badge for the convention. Mm -hmm. Having a badge for the convention is also important when you want to go to events because we check on those things. It's true. Uh, yes. Now, the parade doesn't require a badge for you to be out on the street, but it does require a badge for you to participate. So just keep that in mind. And if you haven't registered for the parade already, I think, yeah, <laughs> that's just too bad. Deadline's yeah, passed. It's, it's way full. Mm -hmm. So remember, Friday through Monday, they could be doing badge checks or hotel room uh, checks at any point in time. Have those on you at all times. The other kind thing nice is thing. if you have your hotel key, that will help you late at night remember where you sleep if you are perhaps impaired in some fashion. Yeah, you can at least get to the hotel, the room, you're kind of on your own at that point. These are big hotels. <laughs> Just start going floor by floor, door by door. No, I think no, someone would notice no. you after a while. Yeah, after about the 13,000th try <laughs> in a large hotel, you can sort of draw. Oh, that's in. another thing. Um, no sleeping in convention spaces. Right. That's a really good thing. So let's go with some of the other basic rules. Uh, Ali, what are your basic tips for con goers about how to survive and, and not be injured, die, or <laughs> not, you know, get um, sick during a con? Find a quiet space to escape from the crowds if they get to be too much because especially Saturday and Sunday this place is going to be packed yeah. so you know scope out some of the quieter places to chill out if that gets a little overwhelming mm -hmm. um. I recommend eating. Oh, eating. eating. Eating is a great thing. Yes. Eating and sleeping. What is this food thing? Yes. I hear about food. I just I just survive on coffee all weekend at the convention. It turns out if you don't eat and you don't sleep after a while, you kind of fall over. And then we've already explained no experience. no sleeping in convention spaces. They'll just kind of roll you out. Yeah. You'll they, be draped over yeah. a poop line in front of the Marriott in no time. They don't know the difference just between, piled between up. sleeping and passing out during the <clears> convention if you're not in your room or, you know, like a, an actual space designed for resting. Uh, my thing going along with the food is I've learned this from traveling around the world so much that sometimes when you're hungry, you can't always get food immediately. Right. So those little, like granola bar type of things or energy bar kind of things uh, not necessarily chocolate because if that's in your pocket it sort of melts and there's yeah. goodness uh, get one um, of those hiking protein bars that tastes yeah. like wood i would also bring a water bottle with you because the hotels are very good about setting out water stations and so you'll always be able to get little cups of water or they'll have fountains mm -hmm. but you know having your own you know 16.9 ounce or 500 milliliter depending on which country you're from a uh, bottle of water around is actually kind of a handy thing yeah i agree uh, plastic, no glass, thank you. Yes. <laughs> that glass would be a lot of fun until it like, broke. Yeah, that's no good at all. Um, what else is going on at the con that we need to draw attention the to? The parade. Oh, the, the parade. The parade, oh, it's yes, going to be awesome. awesome. It's a different route this year. New if you route. have come before, mm -hmm. it is not going down the same streets in the same order that they yeah. normally do. There is information on the web about the new parade route. We've mm -hmm. got a Dragon Con TV bumper. With an that, animated parade route. With an animated, so you can watch it scroll through. So oh, fancy. Know that because I really hate for you to go to your favorite parade spot early and be like, wow, I must have gotten here really early. No one's here. <laughs> and then discover in a, a couple of hours why that is. Yeah. Uh, it's still going to pass in front of the Hyatt, uh, but it's going to take the turn at a different place to go down to the Marriott, and it stages in a completely different area than it did last year, like on an opposite side of the hotel. Yeah. Um, but that means that we have new corners for you to stand on. That sounded bad. We have new places for you to view the parade, and it runs in the opposite direction. Direction. So if everybody's pointing this way and you're like, but the parade's going to come that way, maybe you won't. See, eventually they've got to keep reversing it after a while because otherwise you wind it too tight. So this is just the parade unwinding from all the previous years. <laughs> yeah, pretty That's much. Just get it going. 
circle. Uh, eventually it meets back up to yes. itself. Conservation of momentum. And then yes. about yes. Monday they're like, can we stop now? No, no keep no, going. Keep going. It's, it's good advertising. It's like this show. Yes. So yeah. uh, Blood Drive. We have blood Drive. Pimp blood, blood Drive, drive well. is yes. in the Sheraton and the Marriott. Yes, right? so yes. the Marriott Atrium level. Got two level. locations for the Blood Drive. When you come out of the district track of the hotel, also known as the Habit Trail, uh, on one side you have the Marriott Atrium, mm -hmm. the big level where all the lines are. On the other side you have the Blood Drive. A uh, cool thing about the Blood Drive, a lot of celebrities are into the, the Blood Drive and charity and that sort of thing. So occasionally you're just sitting there having blood siphoned out of you and you go, hey, that's a celebrity. You might be right and may not be hallucinating. If they take more than Or they're just a really good cosplayer. You know, yeah, a really good cosplayer. Uh, a lot of the people from vampire shows like True Blood like to go through the yeah. Blood Drive and promote things and also scare the crap out of people there because they're like, oh my God, you're here for my blood. But yeah. they're not really. We really would prefer if you're going to faint, faint from the blood loss and not from seeing a celebrity. That's almost that's a good tip, except almost <laughs> where it is. That's my good tip for the day. Um, also understand the rules about giving blood, so uh, read up on it a little bit before you come here so you're not disappointed if you disqualified for what's a documented reason for not giving the blood. Yes, and um, please eat before you yes. give blood, and eat drink fluids, blood. drink and eat fluids. And if like, if like me, you can't give blood, you can always help out by promoting the yes. blood drive and spreading the word yeah. on Twitter just around the convention. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to be actually running, a, the blood drive has given us a video ad to run on Dragon TV channels. We'll talk Great. about Dragon TV stuff in a minute. Um, so you're going to see uh, an advertisement for that as well. So the main location is the atrium, but there's also a satellite location in the Sheridan, which is not open the same hours. So check the Dragon Con website, that's dragoncon.org. Link. Tom is going to put a link here? Or where he's just not. He's gonna like... Actually, it's going to appear over your face. Just because of that. It's going to be like a ghost, you know, ghost in the shell where I get the little happy guy over my head. Is that how it's going to go That's down? exactly how it's going right, to go. Good. Yeah. So, um, we got that down. Um, checking out Monday when most of the world is sort of wandering away from the convention. Uh, any tips on escaping from New York uh, yes. without... Yes, early is snake? better. A lot of hotels will give you incentive to check out early because they know what's going to happen starting at about 8 and 9 in the morning Stampede. where you will be unable to get carts and the hotel elevators will be even more congested than normal. So try to be ready. It helps if you pack a little bit the night before mm -hmm. because you don't want to mm -hmm. be in that point where you oversleep and wake up and suddenly realize you've got to be out of your hotel room right then, especially if you've got a lot of costumes that would Pack not be that exciting. Place. Yes, your Jaeger armor is not going to fit that no. quickly, so be prepared. Although, don't try to pack drunk the night before. <laughs> don't. That also could be kind of embarrassing. Where's my roommate? <laughs> yeah, don't, do, don't be that guy. That's why I always leave it partially unzipped, just in case. So just in case your clothing can breathe? See, well, I trap someone Are in there. Are you in the habit of putting people in your luggage? Not officially, no. See, okay. I, I tend to take much smaller luggage, so... Uh... Well, in that case, you've just got to work harder. <laughs> What's Tyrion Lannister doing in here? <laughs> it's carry on only, it's fine, it'll work. So This is uh, the new red wedding version of the luggage. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> when you absolutely have a lot of stuff to move yeah, you after a big event. Chop that up into multiple bags. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> That's my new cleanup just... service, the red wedding cleanup service. That's I'm gonna rent myself out to the hotels afterwards. How do we end up so far off those rails. <laughs> anyway, normally I'm the one who gets us in that kind of trouble. DragonCon TV, let's talk about that. There, yeah, DragonCon TV, is that a thing? We link That's all five of the main That's hotels with the tubes of television. So if you look in the program guide, the app, uh, the interwebs, uh, they will tell you the channel in your hotel that will be offering DragonCon TV programming. That is a mix of The Late Show, Ta -da! featuring us, not necessarily starring, just featuring. featuring we're we're certainly on it. We're on it. Uh, also repeats of The Late Show, because most of you are not going to wake up at 9 o'clock in the morning. We're no, doing true. a show on like... If you're up at 9, you're probably still up at 9. Yes. This is why it's called The Late yes, Show. Yes, you just sort of rolled back around. Loop in time. Uh, we also do some of the larger programming events live from the Centennial Ballroom. Uh, we'll do some of the events from the large ballrooms around the hotel rebroadcast so that you don't have as many schedule conflicts. Uh, the Masquerade is broadcast live in the room. It's the best way to, to watch the Masquerade, so I've heard. I can't because I'm running the thing, so I have to be in the room for it. Um, drink what Someone you want, has to push the fuse want, slider. wear what you don't want, as long as you're in your own hotel room and yeah. not in Centennial. We frown on that sort of thing. Yes, in your hotel room, you can have your pantsless masquerade. Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of a I'm sorry, did I? <laughs> that is my Phantom of the Opera cover band. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> in San Francisco. Anyway, point B. 
that uh, that's a good way to see a lot of the convention. Plus, we're taking music videos from the performance of the convention, uh, short film contributions, and some of the things we uh, liberally like to refer to as comedy that we produce throughout the year. Con content. Well. We have content. lots of content. That is a good thing. Uh, also, uh, once you hit 1 a.m., some of the content becomes a little bit more PG-13, so just enjoy that with your beverage and your pantsless masquerade. <laughs> I'm just going to say pantsless masquerade. That's, the, that's <laughs> a lot now. Episode zero, <laughs> pantsless masquerade. <laughs> Oh no, I'm writing a You know if you put that if you put that on YouTube, we're going to get a lot more hits. <laughs> How do you get banned from YouTube in August? Well, it's a long story. Hey, you're uh, the director of videography. You're the one who has to explain that. Yeah. Hi. We just show up. Yeah. Yes. We're the talent. Hey. Huh? Right. So anyway, talent. Oh. Yes. Tell me what else we've missed before we wrap up this episode 0 of the show. Do we need to talk about the serious business? Let's talk about the serious business. Oh, there is serious business. business. There's serious business Allie, to tell talk us about. about. Serious business. Serious business. Um, Dragon Con has revised its uh, harassment policy um, to be a little more explicit, I yes. guess you could say. Um, well, the, it, the process is, is now documented. Yeah. There's now a process for, There's now a process in place to um, report and document incidents of harassment. Yeah, at the yeah. convention. Where so. the, we had had this before, it had not been fully documented where attendees could see it. It yeah. is now documented. Um, if you are harassed, they have a station set up in the security office, which is here in the Marriott down on the bottom level. Um, there are people who will help you deal with that mm -hmm. and work through that. They will liaise with the Atlanta PD. Mm -hmm. So all of that is set up and ready to go. Yeah. So the previous policy on the website, which is known uh, affectionately as rule number seven, was don't be a jerk. Apparently, we had to spell out in more details how you could be a jerk and what we would do about it in response. Uh, if you run into a harassment issue at the con and you're not familiar with the policy, find a volunteer. The uh, lanyard color for volunteers this year is red. Uh, and they understand the policy. They actually, all the volunteers now receive a document that describes the harassment policy when they show up on site and how to handle it and how to help uh, the guests of the convention and the attendees of the convention deal with uh, harassment issues that have come along. So again, it, it's the kind of thing we didn't think we had to spell out not being a jerk, but apparently in the modern era we still do. So read up on that, make sure you're not unintentionally being a jerk, and understand how to respond to that in case it happens to someone that you care about at the convention. Um, that's all at dragoncon.org. I'm not going to put up a link handheld because Tommy's just going to put that over my face. So anyway. Yes. And he's nodding back there with his headphones like, yeah. yep. Damn right. <laughs> There's a lot of good information on dragoncon.org, especially if you've never been here before. Please go and take a look at that and uh, see what's up there for information, see what's changed. The DragonCon Facebook page is a very good place. There are a lot of people on there, uh, longtime con goers who can answer questions. Anything that you're curious about, they can probably tell you about. So make use of that resource. Yeah, a number of the departments, uh, especially DragonCon Security, have their own Twitter accounts. Yep. And uh, DragonCon Security has been putting out tips for uh, lost and found and things you can do ahead of time to like get a, take a picture of your camera with your smartphone, take a picture of your smartphone with your camera. You know, no information yes. about your items so that if they do end up in the lost and found pool that you have an easier way of tracking it. Security will help you learn how to lose your things. <laughs> right on. Also, speaking of Twitter. Speaking of the Twitters. We have a Twitter account. We do have a Twitter Easy account. Show. Yes. yes. Um, feel free to tweet questions or comments, and we will read them on the air every morning, provided they're appropriate. <laughs> And we get to decide what's appropriate. Yes. Oh, wow. That's, that's kind of <laughs> a little frightening. Within limits. Yeah, to be honest. With great power, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. With great power comes a really screwy Twitter account and <laughs> an uninformed sense of what's appropriate. Absolutely. And on that bombshell. Oh, wait, no. I'm not. I'm not on the BBC. You're the blonde bombshell. I'm sorry. Yeah. The rest of us are brunette or other. <laughs> other? Is that a category? Yes. You realize none and other were the same thing. Anyway, sure. On that note, from Walter White and Allie and myself. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Dragon Con Late Show. You can see us every morning at 9 a.m. or if you're a real person at Con, you're probably going to watch us on YouTube at Video Dragon Con or on our replays on the Dragon Con TV network available in your main host hotel. Um, check the app, check the Twitters, check the Facebooks, all your social medias. Uh, and that's about it. For, so from Allie and Steven, I'm Brian. Have yourself a good con. See you soon.